ice cream company best known for its decadent pints has steadily been gathering the right ingredients, not just for its yummy ice cream, but also for the amplification of social justice causes as well. Through its social media channels and website, the company has called on defunding the police, ending the school to prison pipeline, and encouraging voting by mail. Oftentimes, these campaigns will result in something you see in the frozen food aisle. Justice Remix supports criminal justice reform. Save Our Swirled raises awareness about climate change. And Ido Ido celebrated the Supreme Court's decision to legalize gay marriage. In the wake of this summer's nationwide protests over racial injustice, corporate America has scrambled to respond cohesively. Many have stumbled. The NFL, posting in support of Black Lives Matter while also parting ways with Colin Kaepernick for peacefully protesting, was criticized as hypocritical. And L'Oreal received a similar reaction because it had fired a Black trans model who had spoken up in the past. According to a recent survey, two-thirds of Generation Z consumers say corporate and brand reactions to Black Lives Matter were permanently affect their purchasing habits. Getting it right matters. It's one of the reasons why Ben & Jerry's approach stands out so much. The company has long spoken out on issues since founders Ben Cohen and Jared Greenfield started the Creamery in 1978. In 2000, the hippie brand was acquired by consumer product giant Unilever, but that hasn't slowed its activism. It's even inspired other Unilever brands like Dove Soap to do the same. Like me. Being vocal on liberal causes has so far neither hurt nor helped the brand. Each year, the Ben & Jerry's Foundation earmarks $2.5 million for grassroots causes. But Ben & Jerry's has shortcomings of its own where inclusion is concerned. While the board's seven directors includes four women and three people of color, the majority of Ben & Jerry's workforce is white. This in part reflects the state it operates in. Vermont is about 94% white, so the company is looking for other ways to become more diverse. Another issue is with this deeply unhealthy product, which could be seen clashing with the support of Black Americans who are more likely to contract type 2 diabetes than white people. According to former CEO Yostin Solheim, the company isn't phased, saying, if we share values on climate, same-sex marriage, racism, I think that's a deeper bond than sugar and fat.